Hey guys, and welcome back to a brand new video. Today, I'm running you through my top five Lightroom Classic landscape editing tips that you can use on your photos to level them up like crazy. So without further ado, let's dive in to Lightroom. All right, so here we are inside of Lightroom Classic, and I first wanna walk you through how to nail your composition using the crop tool, using different crop overlays and making sure that your photo is completely level and straight. So. Let's open up our crop tool here. And as you can see straight away, at least for me, this mountain isn't in the center. Luckily things are straight, but let's say they weren't. What I would do is I would come over to this ruler tool here. I'd click on it and then I would find, maybe I had a horizon in my shot where I could draw across the horizon, make it straight and things would look good. However, for me, luckily right now, this is straight. So I'm happy with how it looks. Now, by default, you get this three by three grid, which is super handy. But if you press O, you can actually cycle through a load of different crop overlays that Lightroom offers. So I'm gonna use probably this one for this shot as we've got a mountain in the center and I kind of want that to be the center focus. So as you can see, this cross up here and this cross up here is the center of the image and the peak is off center by quite a lot. So let's move this over and maybe let's move this down a little bit as well. We could even just crop in a little more like that to give a little bit more emphasis on the top of the mountain there. And I'm pretty happy with how this crop looks. Now, of course, every single shot needs a different crop. Every shot could probably benefit from using a different overlay. So just do yourself a favor, press O, cycle through the crop overlays, make sure your horizons are straight and you should be on your way to a pretty good composition. All right, next up on the list is balancing out our photo, not only through exposure and contrast, but also through white balance. Now, in this shot here, things are pretty blue and I'll be honest, I think I kind of want to keep it that way but maybe it could use a little bit more warmth. It's very, very cold. And I know we're in the snow, so it sort of makes sense. But if we just increased our white balance a little bit, I have a feeling it kind of softens the light a little bit more. It makes it feel like it was shot a little earlier in the morning. And if it wasn't as cold this morning, maybe it would have been shot a little bit earlier. However, just increasing the white balance just a little bit definitely helps balance out the highlights, especially in this area of the snow up here. And I find it warms up the shot and makes it a little bit more inviting. Now, if we turn our attention over to the histogram up here, you'll see things are pretty well exposed, maybe a little bit more on the bright side of town. So what we might look at doing here is just decreasing our highlights a little bit, not too much. I do like how bright it is over here, but we would also be able to drop our shadows a touch. Now this is gonna help add a little bit of contrast into our shot, but also help balance out our histogram. If I just crank the contrast, you can see things get balanced out quite well, but this definitely isn't the I'm going for. If anything, I actually might look at decreasing our contrast just a touch and then also dropping our shadows a little bit. If we come back up to our histogram, we can see that nothing is clipping in the highlights, which is really good. That just means nothing is touching this harsh right side of the histogram. And we might just have a little bit of clipping in the blacks here on the dark side. So if we just increase our blacks just a touch, you can see that things get spread out on the blacks just a little bit more. And now I think things are looking pretty good. You can either hit the auto button up here, which is gonna adjust your white balance and your exposure for you. You can use this dropper here and find something that should either be pure white or pure gray and use that as your target, select it, and then your white balance will be adjusted accordingly. Or you can come into this drop down menu here and hit auto, and then it will adjust the white balance accordingly accordingly as well. But for now, I'm pretty happy with how this image is looking, so I'm gonna leave it as is. All right, next up on the list is leaning into the colors you have in your shot. You do not need to paste orange and teal on every single shot you edit. So for example, so let's head back to this shot and let's say I was really wanting to push an orange and teal look on this photo. This is a dominant blue photo. So we've got the teal side covered, but there is little to no warm tones in this image at all. So all I would be adjusting is the highlights, which is over here. These aren't particularly all that blue. And then we have a bit of a faded blue up here that would be out of turn orange as well. That wouldn't look great whatsoever. Mother Nature has already nailed the colors in the world. So just leave them as is. All you wanna do is when you're editing your colors, just try and enhance reality a little bit. So how would I edit the colors in this shot, especially because there is so much blue in this image? Well, believe it or not, I'd probably look at dialing back the blue just a little bit. And then I'd also look at dropping the luminance of the blue. It gives a little bit more of a rich feeling to the shot and also kind of sells the idea that we shot this with a circular polarizer, even though I didn't. I'd look at coming into the other colors and actually look at killing them off. I don't want any purple or magenta in this shot. I don't want any red. And if we have a look at the orange here, I actually like the desaturated orange look. It 
It takes the orange out of the snow over here, which looks great. And then we'd also be able to do the same with the yellow, just a little bit. I also don't want any greens. Maybe there might be a little bit of green in this gradient up here, going from really bright to quite dark blue. And then we might just look at increasing the aquas a touch. Maybe I reduce the blues a little bit too much. I do really like how this sky is turning out. As you can see there though, we really lent into the primary color blue in this shot and pretty much turned everything else off. Now you don't need to do that in every photo, believe me. However, if you're shooting, let's say deep in a jungle, maybe orange and teal wouldn't work over there. If you're shooting in a blue and white environment, maybe orange and teal won't work here either. You've really just got to lean into the colors that are already in your shot. Otherwise, if you're just getting into photo editing, chances are you're going to ruin the edit and things are going to look very unrealistic, which is far from ideal. All right, so with that out of the way, let's move on to sharpening because a lot of people want to sharpen their photos when it comes to landscape images. And believe me, there's a little bit more than just coming in here, cranking that sharpness up up and being done with it. The thing is, when it comes to sharpening, we don't want to sharpen every single aspect in our shot. Usually we just want to sharpen the things that are 100% in focus to help them stand out a little bit more. For example, I wouldn't want to sharpen the snow in the corner down here. I'd really only be interested in sharpening the mountain in the top here. So how do we do that? Well, what we can do is we can increase our sharpening just a touch, and then we wanna hold Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows, and now we can start to adjust our masking. Now, everything in white is going to stay sharpened and everything in black is going to become unsharpened. So if I reduce the masking to zero, you can see everything's white. So that means everything is getting sharpened. And if I start to reduce this, you'll see the sky kind of go away first, which is ideal. We don't wanna sharpen anything in the sky. And then we can sort of keep going until we start to lose the peak maybe about there. Now you can see we're still getting, for example, this like little bush in the foreground. If we just hold this down, we're getting a few things on the track. We're getting a handful of little snow domes here, but it's far better to only sharpen these areas rather than just the whole thing. So now we can come in here, maybe zoom in just a little bit more so we can really see what's going on. If I reduce this completely, you can see the sharpening really gets tapered off on the peak. And as we increase our sharpening, you can see things just get a little bit sharper. You really don't wanna go overboard here as an over sharpened image. They're absolutely everywhere. They don't look good whatsoever. So just increasing it a touch and really masking out the parts that you don't want is definitely the way forward when it comes to masking. All right, so we're sharpening wrapped up. Let's move on to tip number five, which is masking. Masking is probably the most powerful tool inside of Lightroom at least in my opinion. So for example, let's say we really wanted to make sure the point of focus was this mountain up here. How can we adjust it through masking? One of my favorite ways to draw attention to one subject in a shot is through using the radial gradient, inverting it, and then dropping the exposure and the shadows. This way we are adding what is called a vignette. Now there is a built-in vignette tool inside of Lightroom, but the best part about this is that we can 100% customize it. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So we're gonna draw a radial filter over our image right here. We're gonna hit invert, and then we're gonna look at dropping the exposure. Now, things in the foreground I think look great, but I would say the sky just got really, really too dark. It got affected a little bit too much. So what we can do, and this is the best part about using a mask to add your vignette, is we can come to these little dots right here, we can hit intersect mask, and then we can open up the brush tool. Now I'm gonna press O, and this is gonna show me what parts of the image are being selected by our mask. I'm gonna click off invert, and then I'm gonna come here, make sure auto mask is selected, and I'm gonna come and I'm just gonna erase all of this up here. I don't wanna darken the sky at all. The sky's supposed to be bright. Believe me, it's not supposed to be that dark. So we are just gonna clean all of this mask up. It might not be a 100% accurate job, but you guys get the idea. We can turn that off. And now we have just completely adjusted our mask, which is great. The foreground is looking a little darker, which is exactly what we want. And we could also probably come in here and do a gradient filter and drop the exposure there as well. But what I might do is I might come in to intersect this, might open up the brush mask, invert it once again, and then make it a little smaller and then brush away here because I do like how bright this path is. I think it looks really cool. We can come in here as well. We can actually increase the brightness of the path with a brush mask, come in here. And all I'm doing here is I'm just selecting parts of the image that I want to be featured a little bit more, that I want emphasized, that I want to be focused on. And I'm kind of toning down the parts of the image that I'm not really interested in anyone focusing on. Another mask I absolutely love to do is emphasize where the light is coming from. This is through the radial filter once again. 
but in this time, we're not gonna be inverting it. I'm gonna draw around where the light is coming from, and then I'm going to hit the dots again, intersect the mask with a luminance range, and then I'm gonna increase the bottom right here, which is going to start taking away the shadows and the darker parts of the mask. So if we zoom back in on this shot right here, you can see as I increase this, the pink and red parts actually start to disappear from the mask, and then all of a sudden, we're only affecting the, uh, the bright parts of the mask. And that's exactly what we want when we're looking to emphasize the light. Now, all I'm gonna do to emphasize the light is increase the exposure just a touch. And then we're gonna come down to our dehaze tool right here. And I'm gonna decrease the exposure just a little bit. And it just emphasizes where the light's coming from and makes it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Now, I'm definitely far from finished with editing this photo. We haven't touched the tone curve. We haven't touched color grading, but all I wanted to do was walk you through five tips that I absolutely love using on every single landscape photo that I know will level up your landscape shots. If you want a full, complete Lightroom walkthrough of exactly how I edit my photos, I have stacks of them already up on my channel. You can go and check one of them out just here or here, depending on what side of the video it's on. But anyway, guys, that is gonna wrap up today's video. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're new around here, a subscribe it would mean the absolute world and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.